Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the series where we give a mixture of both factual and opinionated advice on how our patrons can improve their miniatures. Yeah, there's some absolutely fantastic uh, entries for this week's one, so uh, I'm super keen to jump into them. Okay, our first submission comes from Invictus Lampada, who says, My most recent vehicle job. Overall, very happy with it, but looking for some areas to improve. The main thing is adding texture to the larger, flatter areas. Um, now... Straight away, one thing I had to look at this before we started filming, and one thing that I noticed is, I think part of the area where you're struggling with this is, it looks to me like this is an application of wash, even over uh, the flat areas of the panels. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned using some Lamy and Medium, and you're still getting some brush strokes. But I think part of the reason for that is that you don't necessarily need to be applying that wash over the panel in the first place. No. We talk about glazing panels a lot of the time, but I think you're uh, glazing and washing while similar in paint consistencies are kind of different methods of applying paint. Mm -hmm. um, I advise you to look up some videos. There's some great videos on YouTube on how to do glazing on miniature painting. I think that possibly what's happening here is there's a bit of a mix mixing of paths here where you, you're sort of trying to get a glazed result, but applying the, the paint as if it were a wash. Um, typically with washes, you want to avoid painting them on flat areas purely because it does pull and it does collect in certain areas and you do tend to get some brush strokes on there. Um, if you are going to be doing a, a wash, typically we would look to be putting that in the recesses, so like the gaps between the armor panels. And if you're looking to get some variation of tone, then I would be looking at applying that uh, as a glaze instead of as a wash. Yeah, and you can and you can also to help with definition, you can also do like a soft soft pin shade first, and then like a darker one in a deeper area, so it adds a bit of tonal variance in the shadows as well, which quite which works quite nicely. Um, you, you mentioned about obviously adding texture and adding sort of like, inf like, like information to the surface of the miniature. Now, obviously, that this is a very clean painted model, which is great. I mean, we love a clean painted model. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're aiming for that kind of like more textured, then I would seriously consider, uh, you know, things like, for example, uh, really refined, super, super careful sponging or using a slightly more saturated uh, color than the armor color. That will give you a bit of variance of tone on the surface of the material. It will show like chips, not chips on the actual down to the bare material but it will show like sort of like chips on the paint so there's like different levels of the paint and stuff like that which works quite, works quite nicely um you've got to think obviously this is a sentinel so it's it's, it's charging forward you know or scouting forward etc it's gonna be rubbing up against things so i would probably more so do more of that sort of like like sort of information on the surface of the material i'd probably do that on sort of like towards the front portion so if you look at the leg for example you've got that armored shin for example so that would probably have a bit more on it than anything else maybe the, the actual front of the the front of the um the the actual crew compartment where the red is you'd probably have a bit more on there just obviously because in like a branch or tree or like a girder or something as it walks down a urban road or something like you've got to really sort of think about situational uh sort of like details that actually um that actually happen on, on, on the model. I think that's really important. I think another way to break up the sort of flatness of the panels and add some texture as well, be if you didn't want to add some chipping to the armor and you did want to keep it really, really clean, I think this, you know, massive panels like this, particularly on vehicles, are a perfect situation for transfers. Mm -hmm. So even if you wanted to just go very generic with it, with some like numbered markings, some big sort of, you know, painted looking markings that you would see in military vehicles. Or a stripe or something. Exactly. That, yeah. And I think within that, you could even... If you don't want to add armor chipping, you could add some some weathering to the transfer itself. So perhaps it's taking some damage to the paint, but not to the actual material of the metal. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. The other thing I was going to say that I think is quite quite good on this as well is that you, you know like everything is very very neat, and actually having that control to be able to do the application of paint and the neatness that you have done demonstrates that things like doing even micro damage so for example like doing tiny little bits just on the edges here and there not so it wouldn't really take away from the cleanliness of the model too much but it would just add a subtle level of interest to certain portions and you'd really focus that on kind of like the most prominent corners or edges or places where stuff would potentially knock or catch as i've mentioned um i really loved the the flamer as well i thought the flamer was great the sort of the, the way you've done the flame there's sort of like a little bit of heat bloom on there um i think the other thing as well i know you're talking about sort of like that kind of that kind of stuff adding interest to the flat surfaces but i think also adding a bit of personality to it and i, I don't mean that in a rude way what i mean is like you've got a massive rocket on the side of it it's a guard model they'd probably like scribble on some name or something onto the side of the rocket or something like you know like, like bug killer or something crazy like that <laughs> you know adding those little things adds interest in a level of it, it's not texture but it adds a level of interest to the model which i think would help massively um but yeah that's that's my thoughts on on, on that part of it and and one final point, and this is really showing my age, is that the fact that you put Pong on the screen of the uh, of the Sentinels uh, sort of like uh, 
command control is is absolutely genius. I mean, that's probably <laughs> the reason why it doesn't have much weathering because he's too busy playing Pong. But um, but uh, yeah, the skill to do that is really good. And that, that that character, that's the exact thing I was talking about with like the rocket on the side of the of the, of the Sentinel, like that kind of like information and adding that detail personality to it is is also really important. Yeah, I think it does show the commitment to wanting to add that personality and flavor and kind of friendliness to the model. I think doing that on some more visible areas would go a long way. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, our next submission comes from Chip Mercury, who says, I loved the Carl Caradon's commission uh, video that the Siege team posted and was actually in the middle of painting my own Carl Caradon's commission. However, I would like some suggestions slash critique on how I could push them a little bit further, as well as how to approach painting the Polynesian slash Maori style markings. I think one of the things with the Carl Caradon scheme is that it is quite uh, darker in the sense of the overall color, like the colors and tones that are used on there. You've used red as an accent, uh, which you can see on some of the optics and some of the lenses and things, which is good. Um, I, I I think personally to push these a bit further and stuff, I think you could easily afford to increase like the highlighting on them. I think even though they are darker colored in the sense of the of the vibrancy and saturation of colors that are on there, I think you can you can afford to push push the edge in brighter. I think that will really help kind of like define all the facets of the armor, all the like the cowlings on the weapons and all those kind of things. I think that would work really well. And, and the other thing I'd probably say as well is is with the lenses and stuff, you've done red, which is great, but I think that because the models are quite cold in in that sense. I think you can afford to maybe do some other other lens colors on there. So potentially add a couple of green ones on there that would contrast the red quite nicely. And that would just add a bit of warmth to the models as well. Like I know that they're very aggressive, very cold, kind of like merciless kind of marine chapter. But you, I, I think sometimes when you play with temperature uh, through sort of that con, uh, accent colors and stuff, I think it can really add a whole greater look to the miniature. Um, yeah, I agree with what you said about the lenses. I think additionally as well, like something that you could do again, like talking about just small wins, really, really easy things to do that will add a ton of, of value. I think at the minute we spoke about it in previous episodes, the, the focal point typically you're going to want on a miniature is the face or the helmet. And for me, they get really lost here, not only because there's no extra highlighting details done, but also those eye lenses where my eye naturally would want to be drawn. The, the, the red is very, very dark. I presume that you've base coated them with a red lens and then perhaps put a shade or a wash in there. And I think because there's no highlight stages afterwards to bring those back up, if you think that they're going to be, you know, lenses or, you know, glowing light often the way that they'll be painted, I think having those really, really bright, very, very vibrant red all the way up to an orange highlight, I think would instantly draw your eye to them. And I think it would make the helmets stand out a lot more. And I think, as you said, adding some more edge highlighting details, I think if, if you didn't want to do it on the whole model and you spoke about how this is a commission, so I understand that time is very valuable in that sense. I think that adding it to the areas that matter most and where you want the eye to be drawn, uh, you know, you could be doing it around like the collar, the the helmet, and then adding some extra highlights on those lenses, I think would make the the faces and the focal points stand out a lot more. And I think it would make it be a very, very small investment in terms of time. Mm. And you could easily do it on the whole squad or the whole army, but it's gonna add a ton of value, much more so than doing, you know, lots and lots of edge highlighting on the on the whole models. Yeah, no. Uh, regarding the sort of like the, the the tribal markings of Polynesian Maori markings, I think that obviously that's that's free handed. And one thing definitely to, to command before you even attempt that is just a really good control of the, of the tip of the brush. Um, I would uh, advise possibly doing it in a way so that it, it's present on the models, but it doesn't detract. You don't want to go too crazy with the free hand and take away from the overall look of the miniature. I think you can add it on to say, for example, maybe the left or right of a shin plate, maybe the knee, maybe obviously on a shoulder, put on a pauldron, just like a strip of right in there. Maybe you could put some kind of like on one of them, it could be on there on the helmet, for example, somewhere like that. So I'd vary it up. Like if you're going down, like because of those markings and inherently what they are, it comes across like a very tribalistic kind of like feel to the, to the army. And, and what you would think is that like every warrior would mark their armor in a very personal way with the markings and sentiments and things that they want to do. So I, I'd approach it in that way and vary it up a little bit whilst also not, putting too much on that detracts away from from the actual miniature and i think that's that's probably the way that i would approach it and obviously you know practice your brush control to make sure you can paint those shapes and markings consistently and sharply and i think that'll that'll, that'll make them finish them off really well yeah i think an easy way to do that would be literally just to take some paper and just give it a practice a yeah. couple of goes you know with the same paints that you're going to be using before you actually apply it to the models and uh, also i think typically with those sorts of things less is more there's kind of a tendency to want to do loads and loads and loads of it but i think when it yeah. when there is such a small amount of it, it's it actually stands out more than if you've done tons. Yeah. Okay. So our final submission here is from Andy, who says, "Hello all. Uh, this is my take on Baron von Fancy Hat from Moonstone. I've tried to use Landschneck as an inspiration while still making it at least vaguely cohesive. 
Uh, I struggle with coming up with my own color schemes and then figuring out what paints to use. Uh, so this is an attempt to practice that. And also it needs a base, but I haven't any ideas for that yet. Well, he definitely has a very fancy hat. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so uh, the the model in itself, obviously, like there's, it's an armored, obviously, like an armored model, like a knight. So I think that you immediately, you when it comes to color schemes and things like that, like silver would immediately come to mind because obviously the armor. Now you could do a more baroque armor. You could probably do it in like bronze, or maybe you could do it in like uh, you could do potentially like in gold or something like that. Um, typically, because steel or silver is a stronger metal, that's why most armor tends to be in that color. But um, but I think the uses of like the, the fancy hat blue, I think that's quite good because it, it draws the eye to one of the parts of the model which your eye is instinctively drawn to, as we've said various times in this episode already, like the face and the head of the miniature. Um, so using that blue as an accent there works really nicely. And, and, and again, it works well that you've chosen some red and also yellow, so a primary color triad to to kind of like frame the head in a triangle of those colors, which I think works really well. Um, I, I think from looking at the miniature, I think it's something you pointed out, George, that like the model is fully armored. So um, regarding the legs, I, I probably would keep them as as silver rather than doing the purple and green personally. I, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I kind of respect the experimentation. I understand mm -hmm. that you're trying to come up with this, like trying to create your own color scheme. Um, but for me personally, I think it's still important to read the material that the miniature is presenting to you. Mm -hmm. And if you've got down here the same textured surface leg armor panel as you have got up here, because this is kind of like a more, uh, you know, historical sort of more realistic kind of vibe model. I think that it's a bit bizarre to me that you'd have the shin be this metal plate, and then you've got the same thing mm -hmm. on the thigh, but they're different colors. Um, you'd expect that to be if it was going to be a painted material, um, particularly in a historical sense, you might expect that to be on like wood or some fabrics. Yeah, on shield. Or Seeing something. it on on the metal looks a bit jarring to me personally. Yeah, and I think as well potentially it's a bit busy with the colors that you've got going on. I actually like that you've got the the yellow and the red and the blue up here because it's drawing the eye to that focal point uh, on the upper areas of the model, the shoulders, the head, and the face. Um, but then my eye is kind of being detracted back away because you've done that on the legs. I think that keeping those legs as just the silver metallic would have made the colors up here stand out more and then draw your eye to the face even more. Yeah, definitely. I think I think when you, you mentioned about basing as well, and I think one of the things to, to touch upon that is because you have got some quite warm colors. You've got the yellow, you've got the red, obviously those scatter scatter colors that are just on there and they're obviously a bit of blue as well, which is a bit colder. But I, um, I think if you were to, to repaint the legs silver, so they are the armor rather than obviously the colored, almost, I don't know what to call them, stocking kind of color or whatever. But but um, I think you could go with quite a nice warm sort of like grassland base would look would look quite good because then it would just it complement the model quite nicely because it's quite rich and quite dense with that kind of vibrant green. You've obviously got green towards the lower portion of the model anyway on that stocking thing that you painted on. Um, so I think if you were to do like a grassland kind of basin, maybe with some brown earth and some scatter bits of grass and stuff like that, that would just really balance the model quite nicely. The armor being silver and it being the way that it is, is a bit colder as well. So again, you'd have a warm, warm and cold temperature balance between the base and the miniature, which I think would work quite nicely also. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's a great idea actually. Yeah. Okay. A great mix of miniatures there, which has been fantastic to see. And a big thank you to all of our patrons for submitting uh, their miniatures for this episode. If you'd like to get your miniatures featured on a future episode of Critique Clinic, check the link in the description of this episode and you can become a Patreon member and there'll be details on how to do so on our Discord. And we hope that even if you aren't a Patreon member, you've still found something valuable from this video and some tips on how you can improve your miniatures yourself. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care.